Hello guys, my name is Matt from paintacademy.com Today I would like to show you um, one of my recent commissions that we made in the studio So this is a Stormcast Eternal uh, Warband to, for Shadespire but it is converted to make them look like vampires Yeah and it's a little bit special because usually we don't record any of our day-to-day -day work because recording and the paint job slow down the painting process so it wouldn't be fair for our uh, customers to receive uh, our work later just because we want to record it but in this case I really want to show you how it's done because it's very small commission obviously and it's quite interesting so I thought it would be worth it and they are stormcast vampires so I just uh, replaced their heads and their weapons with some of other warhammer bits and we have vampires like this and uh, before I start to show you the whole painting process I wanted to show you very quick and easy way to do like the blood effect on the models which is very appropriate for the vampires and I wanted to use only a tiny bit of this uh, blood paint on, on these models and yes uh, you can see which which paint I'm using and it's just only this paint sometimes you can mix it with a little bit of regular black color to make this um, blood a little more dry but straight from the pot it's like the very very um, fresh fresh blood effect so yeah I really recommend you to use it uh, and try it because uh, this paint is very common and you can get it in most of the uh, <coughs> shops with ho hobby supplies uh, I'm guessing more like the train uh, hobby supplies for the train modeling uh, all this stuff not, uh, not essentially in these uh, hobby stores with Warhammer or Wargaming products maybe more like this old school regular uh, hobby modeling stores and yeah you only need like old um, paintbrush and this product and you can do whatever you want with it and yeah that's how they look at the very end of the paint job and I will try to show you each step of the process and I will show you all the stuff I'm doing on the guy with the side because I didn't want to stretch out the video too much so I just picked one of them and all the other stuff is the same just on the different model so all the techniques and other details are like basically the same Okay, so as always I started with a brushing, which is like the core of my process and I'm telling it all the time the proper airbrushing um, give you like very good po point of reference for other colors and other shadows and lighting so if you do like really good job at the beginning your work will, will be much easier down the road and uh, the main idea for the armor was to make it look like the bone structure uh, maybe without the, the texture only the color so yeah in, and I probably should have some kind of a bone color bonish uh, color uh, without mixing but I, but I haven't so I decide to mix the medium brown with <coughs> a little bit, uh, bit of black and then just uh, add more white to it which gives you more or less like this brown grey kind of 
color which is exactly as you need for the any kind of bone structure. And design of armor on this model is quite easy. So I just decided to go with the basic highlighting. So the first layer, the darkest one, is just uh, on the whole model. And then I'm just spraying from above with, with a little bit, bit lighter shades. And there are two of them. So the mid layer, which I missed. And missed on the video, obviously, uh, but not in the pain painting process. And then just uh, very final, final highlights with white. And um, with the final highlights, you need to be a little bit careful just to not to overpower the mid layer, which you did before. And yeah, there is no much more secrets in that. So it's very basic uh, highlighting. But it works, which is great. And at the end, I thought it's a little bit too bright. Mm, maybe not too bright, but the shadows are not as defined as I wanted. So I just took the plain black color and sprayed from the bottom up. So I just try to make the uh, contrast between the brightest parts and the darkest parts more visible and more defined. So if you want to make all the edges more visible, uh, it's a good idea to <coughs> to do that, but you need to have like a lot of control over the airbrush. So if you're just starting and you don't feel very comfortable with airbrush, I would skip that. But if you have some experience and it works for you, it's great to do like this very final step with the shadows. This isn't like the usual part of my painting process. Uh, usually, usually I just go with any next uh, color I have, like the uh, color for the particular parts. So like brown for like belts or metal for metal. And yeah, and I decide I'm in, I'm doing like whole piece of equipment from the uh, start to finish but I decide it will be more clear for you and easy, easier to follow if I just put all the basic colors on all the par basic parts and then just uh, try to highlight every part uh, separately. So yeah, I decide to paint uh, black lining which is like the definition between all the parts which are not separate by any clear uh, line after airbrushing so they look like together and the black lining is the process when you just uh, draw the line between all the parts which increase the contrast and make it more visible and also I decide then that I, I will do the base color for all the, all the other parts so you will have like the clear image what to do next after this uh, phase. It's a little bit tedious but I decided to try that. Usually, usually I don't do that because I know what, what I wanted to do but I thought it may be a little bit easier for you. I think uh, it's important but not very interesting to watch so I just did the black lining and a little bit of black parts and just cut to the end of the uh, this uh, step because I thought it will be a little bit boring and make the video uh, too long uh, to watch it's already like an hour so I just decided to cut to the uh, point where I have all the basic colors done so you can uh, watch the black lining and rest of 
the process should be very obvious. Okay, so I have all the major parts done, at least with basic colors, and I want to show you one more uh, trick I use to make a painting a little bit faster. So I just use the white paint in the airbrush and I spray <coughs> the very, mm, the biggest black parts uh, on the model just to make like the basic highlight. And if you have decent contour over airbrush, you can do it fairly easy. Uh, and since I have all the other parts on the armor almost white, there is uh, no chance that I will cover some of my previous work with this white because I'm spraying white over white. So yeah, I can do like very clean uh, highlights on the black parts without damaging any other any other paint job. So yeah, if you have a situation like that, that it's very very useful to do that. And yeah, I need to do like the main white armor and 99% of the paint job is already done with airbrush and black lining, but I still need to highlight some of the edges. So it's fairly easy and uh, fairly quick. So I just decide to do like the very, very basic highlighting uh, on the old parts that aren't highlighted with uh, a brushing. And <clears throat> I double checked for the black lining. So if there was any piece I missed, I just do more black lining over it. And yeah, this part is fairly easy to do, so I don't know if I can say anything useful about that. <laughs> but if there is something I can make more clear, uh, just let me know in the comment section, because I try to anticipate any problems you may have with the paint job, but for me it's like one big uh, mystery, <laughs> so 
yeah, if there is something that isn't as obvious for you as it is for me, just let me know and I will try to clarify.
I wanted to show you the process of painting his blade, but I forgot to press the record button again. So it's already done and I can't do much about it. So I decided just to show you the process of painting uh, the non-metallic metal on the other parts which are on his hand and a little bit on his helmet. And I went with this kind of navy blue color for the base because this uh, very dark deep blue, bluish gray color it's very nice contrast for the <coughs> all the other colors which are fairly uh, in the brown gray area so yeah if I would use just like the regular steel which is like plain uh, gray black and uh, white it will be like all of the same so I decide to make it a little bit more interesting with using like the blue bluish color for the non-metallic metal parts and what can I say about that you should go like from very dark uh, dark shade of this uh, this color to almost the uh, very bright gray area maybe not just for the um, white but the color transition should be very steep so the contrast between the darkest parts and these medium parts should be very very strong and it's like the secret secret for the painting non-metallic metal and uh, so yeah you should uh, train doing uh, very smooth color transitions without uh, using a lot of layers of uh, different colors but with a very uh, similar tone so you can go with something very very different and very very brighter than the base and just try to make it smooth and if you can't make it smooth try to paint paint like the texture you can just make these uh, brush strokes which will be visible but if you do it with like very regular manner it should look fine so try to mm, do something that work, works for you but you have these two options either do this really really smooth color transition or paint like the regular texture and it will probably look like nothing special until you use uh, the white color so if you do something you uh, think it's okay with the mid layer just go for the white and do the, the highest contrast you can and get with the edges and the rivets and like this small focus points on the brightest uh, brightest points uh, with the white and feel free to use more thick paint than you usually do and it should work it should uh, look at least decent if you do the contrast right so you don't need to make the colors transition all the smooth and the prettiest in the world but if you get the contrast right it should look at least decent
mm, the usual problem with highlighting black is to avoid making making it gray and this issue is the most hard to avoid uh, on the larger sur surfaces so in this case it would be like his shoulder pads it's like the largest black surface on on this model and luckily we already do uh, highlighted that with a brush so only details left is the on painting the edges so in this case you should just aim at the high contrast to avoid making it gray so just pick uh, like the bright bright gray instead instead of medium or dark gray and you will be fine so on the small smaller parts it's like no brainer here and it should shouldn't be an issue for you
Mm, and the last thing that's not finished yet is that all of the small details that are already uh, painted with uh, the basic color but not highlighted and there is a lot of small pieces like um, the skin just a little bit of skin underneath the hel helmet uh, the stick on his weapon the the like the the parts of leather on his uh, around his waist, waist and all the things like that and the protocol is all the same a little bit of surface with like the medium color and the edges with something very bright so no matter the color just uh, keep the like the tone differences just highlight a little bit of the main surface with something which, which is brighter than the already the base that is already there and at the end just highlight with very very bright uh, edges and that's it that's almost all of it there is no special tricks details on or anything I could uh, tell you about I am really trying to keep, keep the techniques as simple as possible so I just reuse the same stuff all over again it's easier to uh, teach my painters to do that and it's easier to me to follow up with my own, own process so I really recommend you to do that as well and of course the like the final step is also to check if you haven't missed anything it happens sometimes you made some mistakes you will uh, like leave the spot of the paint somewhere where it shouldn't be and you will need to fix that so that, that like the last phase is also for checking all this all these details you, you could miss during the uh, all the other work so it al always good to do that and if you uh, work with anybody else it's also good to give somebody the model at the end to um, to like check out and they probably find some of the stuff you you missed because when you uh, look at the model for hours and hours it's uh, very easy to like not see all the details you don't want to see and I don't know how it works but when you do when you give the model for somebody that haven't looked for the hours on it and uh, it will be like obvious for him immediately where you made uh, like major mistakes so if you have somebody you can show the model it's good idea to do that before you do the photos or but of course it is it isn't mandatory so do as you like
I had the bases painted before, so <coughs> it's like the final step to put this guy on, on his base, as well as uh, the other two, which I have I had already done at this point. So yeah, it was very interesting commission for me and hopefully I will do more of like unorthodox stuff. I really like painting like the classic uh, color schemes on the models and for games like Warhammer 40k it, the, the colors of the for example any chapter of Space Marines are pretty solid and you can not uh, change it much but for the other games there is free for all and you can do all crazy stuff if you want and in this case this was uh, an idea of my customer so I, I'm glad he had this, this this stuff in mind because it's always very interesting okay so I hope you enjoyed the video and if you use any of the stuff I did in the video send me the results I will be very glad to see if I'm helping anyone with anything so if you decide to try this let me know and see you in the next video cheers